I want to say good morning, good afternoon, depending on what time you see this. Good day or good night. And I say God bless you guys. Don't look at me. I'm looking like a mess, right? I'm like, hey, heading out there, going to have fun. But you know something? I want to ask you something. Are you always here? This is against the law. This is against the law. Or this is, yeah, this is lawful. This is, this is okay. And I'm like, oh, no one's above the law. No one's above the law. The rule of law, the rule of law. Now, um, this video is coming from, you know, within the U.S. And we love the U.S. You know, I like the U.S. By the grace of God, it has a biblical role to play. It's in, it's prof in prophecy. There's a lot of important things. A lot of wonderful people. A lot of good laws. Some of it are laws. Some of it are some questionable laws. But the question I want to ask to, and this is not a full, you know, like someone like a legal scholar going over all the details of it. And I'm talking fast because I have a short time. I have to go get some stuff done. It's, what is the rule of law? And on what it, on, on and on what is it based? What's the standard? Because if we say we follow the rule of law, okay, is it the law of the Constitution? Okay. What gives the Constitution its weight and its bearing? Now, I'm not advocating lawlessness and goody and burn and tear the stuff and say, I don't follow the law. I do what I want, like anarchy and all that stuff. Because we need law and order. Yes, we do. My question is, what is the law? and order we are following. Because I always say this much, you know, and I'm ducking my head because I'm looking at the timer and this one and going around it on my side of the camera. It's like, I always say this, if they're not following the laws of God, then they're not going to follow the laws of man for the, those who are acting bad in the world. And if we are following the laws of God, if we are, sometimes they go in conflict with the laws of man. Sometimes they go in tandem together. But sometimes they don't. So what happens then when the laws of God will conflict with the laws of man? That is going to get interesting. Because, biblically speaking, there is going to come a time, and there's, it's already here, it's been there before, whereby the laws of God are in conflict with the laws of man. In many instances, I mean, take for instance, Sunday blue laws. That's not God here. That's not God input this here. And then laws sometimes differ from state to state, locality to locality, region to region, country to country. So then the question is, on what basis? Is it from Aristotle, Plato? Is it from the Greek, the Romans, the Medo Persians, the Egyptians? What about God's law? Well, and then if it is biblical law, is it like you know other countries may have different laws, different names like Sharia law and other stuff? On what standard are they basing these laws? I would say if you follow God's law, it should be universal, right? But then how can I then tell someone else to follow this law because it's what we believe, but what they believe may be something different? So it's an interesting question. I'm just curious. What is the rule of law and what is the standard? I believe the rule of law is based upon what God's law, God's laws are from the Ten Commandments, written as they were from the beginning. Right? And that the laws of society that benefit or build off of God's law, they then become good. And what we notice, those laws that actually follow Jesus' teachings, those laws that follow God's way, God's laws, they actually make society better and more prosperous. There's a reason why a time period was called the Dark Ages and then became the Renaissance. When God's law is lived, it's called the Law of Liberty, the Ten Commandments. When God's law is lived and obeyed and implemented, not to be like a regular, like, you better do this or else. No, but something to say, hey, this makes sense. I need to know. I need to not have any other gods before the Almighty God, right? I need to not call and use God's name in vain. God's name is holy. He's special. I mean, you want somebody misusing your name? So, you know, so don't mind you want to misuse your name and malign your name, defamatory, all that stuff, you know. So the OMG, leave it alone, don't leave it alone, you know? But it says also, remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. Not the one that it says, remember the Sabbath, the little one line. No, no, no. Give me the details. Give me who you are. What are you talking about? Right? You know? Remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. For in six days the Lord created the heaven and earth, right? The season all them therein, but in the seventh he rested. Therefore the Lord blessed and hallowed the Sabbath day, which is the seventh. So then those Sunday blue laws, which are observing of the first day of the week of Sunday sacredness, goes in contrast to the seventh day, Saturday, which is God's law being applied. Remember I said they will conflict at some time. They have done in the past and they will again. Reformation, counter-reformation, all this stuff. We need to look, we need to study history. We need to study history. We need to study God's word. And again, study LNG wise, study the Bible, I like King James, King James in particular. But we need to study history to really know on what basis and what standard. Because again, if it's the rule of law, because I mean, think about it, if it's the rule of law. I keep asking, what law are they talking about in the courts and the Congress and everywhere else? Because they're not obeying what they say or what they preach or what they do. And they're not akin to what God says. If they're not obeying his law, 
even if it came from someone that rose from the dead, why are you going to obey the laws of man? And they're not obeying the laws of man, most instances. But if you don't, they come at you heavy. And what did you try to do? Come with little fines, imprisonments, whippings, lashes, beatings, things, you know, worst case, capital punishment. They, they try to kill you. But they'd like to take away your time of living on earth. Lock you up in prisons and jails and stuff. Take away your time or put you in solitary confinement if they really want to come at you hard. Fines, imprisonments. So if we don't obey the laws of man, we get fines, imprisonments, beatings, whippings, lashings, and potential death. And if we don't, if we don't obey the laws of God, the creator, the higher law, is there a cost? It is a cost. Jesus paid that one because to obey, to disobey God's law is actually called sin. Sin is a violation of God's law and it comes in three forms. Pride of life, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. If you violate God's law, it's immediate death. But I don't see anybody dropping and dying right now, right? But you read some of the stuff in the Old Testament. Some people did drop and fall right away, you know? Remember those when they got collected food on the... You know, on the, on the Sabbath when they were not supposed to and do some other things there on the Sabbath. You know, those who really disobeyed in God's law and tried to burn strange fire and other stuff. Death came in many ways when they tried to, you know, remember remember also the golden calf and, you know, Aaron and them. You know, It didn't turn out well. We don't want to disobey God's law, which is a loving creator. The law gives us guidance. I stopped at the fourth commandment. Let's continue. What about you? Remember the, you know, remember the, you know, honor thy mother and thy father. That's a good law. I mean, they made us and they did. What about the heavenly father? Remember Jesus told Jesus told the, the people that asked him, Jesus, your mother and your brothers and sisters are out there for you. And he said, who is my mother, sister, brother? You notice he didn't say father? And his father's God, the father of heaven. So it's interesting. What about thou shalt not steal? Can we go and steal? No, we can't. Why? This, how do you want someone to steal from you? You know, what about don't, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's good? Thou shalt not murder or kill. Homicides, murder, things. Look what's happening in the world. Look at the travesty happening. So what are we asking ourselves? What are we doing? Are we studying the word of God and applying it appropriately? But then what about if people take the same scriptural words of God and try to change it and make it thing it? What about, you know, know about the Jesuits? Suppose you're society of Jesus. They're not following Jesus. They do something else. Okay. There are many people who take God's law and twist it to their own destruction and to destroy the people. Even under the guise of plain religious. Religious or plain religion, organized religion, even the World Council of Churches. Some of these groups are not godly. They're not of a godly origin and nature. We need to be careful where we fall. Because they said it's in the church. We need to do things a certain way. You have to follow a certain standard. And if you don't attend the church or go to the church, the building construct of mortar and bricks and concrete, you're not doing good. You're an outcast. You're a heathen. You're a pagan. You're a heretic. You're a bad person. But didn't God tell the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman at the well, that, that they will come of those who love God and worship God in spirit and in truth? So to dishonor God is to not worship God and to not give him his due honor and reverence as, as outlined in the fourth commandment of the Sabbath. But yet we want to follow the laws of man, not the laws of God. But God's laws, God's laws are more weighty, er, we have eternal consequences while man's laws are. I mean, there are cases of people on the earth here have been, we've been, some people have been tried and given some faulty things, wrongful accusations, wrongful, wrongful imprisonment, wrongful sentences. And sometimes just to get out of it, you got to, take a plea deal or even if you don't take a plea deal you gotta you face the crime and then you say can i sue i lost my time on life i lost my time which is limited three score and ten plus ten if you can you know if, if you can get you know if you can if you got strength by the grace of god well they don't give you back anything sometimes compensation then you can sue sometimes but you lost the time but god's laws are different they're eternal and he's one is correct his ways are not like our ways so when they talk about the rule of law and the standard they really need to take a look from what basis they're coming at you with or where they're coming at us with because I'm just under the same applicable rules. I mean, we have to follow traffic laws and, you know, laws of work, workplace, code of conduct, all these different things. And they're appropriate, yeah. But we have to ask her, what about God's law? And then what about the people who use it in a different way? I said, God, so let your conscience be a guide. I see if you're ever confused, look deep into your heart, look up in the sky, look around you, look at the world. And just talk to you, heavenly creator in your heart, in your mind, all of us. And just ask, Lord, what should I be doing this day? How should I do this? Do I want to harm anybody else or do I want someone to harm me? Should I worship you or worship the tree or the rocks or the post office? You know? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> post time, worship post office, you know? I mean, think about it. He said the laws are two things, right? Love the Lord God with all your mind, heart, spirit, strength, and love your fellow brothers and sisters as yourself. And these all hang the whole Ten Commandments. And the commandments are not heavy, not grievous, not wicked, cruel things that keep you like keep you like a slave. They give you guidance and a balance and a standard. If you've done the correct way according to how God specified. So if you're talking about the rule of law, it should be the rule of law, of God's law. 
Because man-made laws, you look at the courts, look at the Supreme Court, for instance. Look at stuff that happened. The judge, the verdicts that come down. Upside down world bizarro. We go by the rule of law. No one's above the law. No one's above the law. It's all talk, talk, and rhetoric sometimes. And you say to yourself, where is justice? The Justice Department is corrupt too. And I mean, this time we're talking about a lot of stuff. The courts are corrupt. The Justice Department is corrupt. I mean, President, oh, Lord help me. Are people actually elected or are they selected? <laughs> it looks more like selected to me because if they were doing the correct thing and following God's law, it'd be a lot different. There would not be such pain and suffering and disparity and so much partiality of judgments and verdicts and cases and distribution equitable equitable or equal equal distribution of resources in the pursuit of life liberty and happiness uh, again love this country love the people love all the stuff love all the stuff you can do here it's a beautiful country you can do so many things i can do so much more stuff here i've done than in my own country when i grew up you know but when i came here i'm like wow land of opportunity milk and honey everyone is rushing to get here and yet he has a biblical role to play in prophecy it'd be good for us to find out what's the role of america in the prophecy is it a lamb-like beast that speaks little dragon we're hearing things. So let's do this. Let's not be like those who've seen, they can't see, and hear, and they can't hear. Let's just listen to God. God bless you all. We'll catch up with this. This, this is far from over. Hmm. Far from over. Rule of law. Let's see what God says about that. God bless you all.